Hi everybody, it's Andrew from Collective Intelligence and we've got about 16 or 17 minutes to take a look inside of Serum and start to understand it from the inside out. So if this is your first time looking at Serum, don't worry, I'll take your hand and I'll lead you through the journey. Okay, so here I am with Serum in front of me and I'm going to talk you through the interface so that you start getting uh, a level of understanding of what exactly you're looking at. So we have um, the Serum logo here and we can change our skin to look something different here, right? So um, this is our default look of Serum, which is probably what you're looking at. And then we can also, um, well, make it really big, right? So we can change the zoom amount. Um, so let's go back to like uh, 200. It's very big, but damn, it looks clean. Um, let's come back to 100, right? So you can change if you have a really big monitor or if your heart um, want, want to um, be able to read it because maybe your eyesight's not quite so good, um, then you've got the possibility of changing that there and then setting the default zoom. So every time you open it up, it has that same setting. We've got the oscillator tab here where we can see all these parameters. We've got the effects. We got the matrix. We got global parameters. So these are the four folders that we've got across the top. We'll probably mostly be talking about the oscillator today. We've got the ability to save presets. So if we design a sound that we like and then we want to save it, then we can put it in a folder and go boom, save, cool, happy days. Here we've got the ability to browse through presets so we can select a preset um, oops. and then oops, have a listen to it alright we've got the forward arrow which skips through so we can skip forward and back to listen to a lot of presets we've got the ability to view the presets as like a list instead of as a drop down menu so we can go through here uh, and we can also filter them by category um, down the side so then we've got the menu option. We can initiate the preset to set it back to um, normal. We can load presets. We can initiate all the modulation. So no modulation is on that particular preset if we just want to reset everything, but we want to keep some of the um, functions of the LFOs that we've made or the wavetables we've made. We can do it there. Um, we've got the about, the readme, and then we've got a bunch of other abilities to um, change certain parameters. Cool. We've got the master output, which is set by default at 70%. Um, we can move that. We can right-click it and set it back to default in order to put it back to what it defaults to. Um, and then we've got a meter here to show us the volume output. Right, so we're not clipping here. We're getting a little bit close to cl clipping there, right? So we can visually see that. Um, then moving down, we've got the oscillator here. So oscillator A, we can tell that that's turned on by that little blue light and also it grays out the window when it's not on. And by default, we got a saw wave. Cool. We've got the ability to um, go plus four or minus four in octaves. Right, so we can change the octave that we're working in. We've got semitone, so we can um, increase or decrease by... 12 semitones. We've got fine tuning amount, so we can s gently tune um, our um, oscillator if we need to. And then we've got the ability to um, modulate the pitch overall, right? So this is a smooth parameter that has a huge range of negative 64 all the way to plus 64, right? Um, and it doesn't step like that, right? So that doesn't... Again, these step this naturally increases and decreases. Cool. And you can um, modulate that with LFOs and certain things, which we'll get into. Um, and then next we've got a, a wave tape. Oh, we've got the ability to actually change the wave here. So we click on the default name and we can click and change it to a different waveform. So in this case, we could change it to uh, spectral, alien spectral, right? So different waveform. We can skip through the waveforms. I like Alien Spectral. We can click on this, um, and this brings us into the wavetable editor, right? So we can decide to draw in our own wavetable if we want to. Like so. 
Um, and then we come back over here and it's edited and we can play it and listen to it. But it also has um, a whole bunch of other features in here, which are definitely becoming sort of more advanced than what we are going to be covering in the scope of this video. But yeah, um, we'll do stuff on that later on down the track. So I'm going to load up that again as default. We have unison here. So we can stack multiple voices up to 16. So this is basically, um, seem, it's almost as though we're duplicating the oscillator 16 times and we've got 16 oscillators or voices playing. So if we have um, a whole bunch of voices, we can detune them from each other. Right? So they're slowly kind of going in and out of sync with each other. And then we can blend the volume, right? So we can exaggerate the center voices and lower the volume of the outside voices. So the center are indicated by the yellow, the green are the outside voices. So we can play with how um, the voices are stacked in terms of volume. And then we've got phase. So this is dictating where the wave uh, waveform is going to start from. If the random phase is at zero, you will start exactly on that yellow line every time you trigger the oscillator, right? If you've got random turned up, it could happen anywhere in that sort of shaded yellow area. Uh, the phase or the oscillator will trigger from anywhere in that range. So if you want the sound to be exactly the same every time, random, uh, pull the phase to 0% random, and then set that to where it sounds the best, and it will always re-trigger from there. If you want something kind of sounding like the random helps it sound a bit more analog because the, the sound is not so consistent all the time. So um, it will kind of start randomly all through, throughout here. And then we've got the wavetable parameter here. So this is wavetable position and this allows us to cycle through the waveform. So if I hold, the, hold it, right? So the alien spectral is a pretty complex wavetable with quite a lot of range. It changes a lot as you move through that. And then um, you can see it depicted differently if you click on the screen. Cool. Uh, and then next we've got the ability to do certain things like mirror the waveform. Um, if I do it like this. Right. We can manipulate it in various different ways. We can FM um, from other oscillators. We can um, flip the waveform. Cool, we can um, sync it and like double it basically or duplicate it heaps of times. So yeah, that allows us to do all kinds of interesting modulation. And then we got pan, left, right, somewhere in between. Cool. And then level, overall volume level of that oscillator. Cool. So that is the oscillator. I can right click that, set that back to, owners can right click and set everything back to, um, Unity, uh, and then if we double click, we can type values in here. So um, as long as I'm typing a value within the particular range, then um, we can just type, double click, type, press enter, boom. And then we turn that off. We come over here. It's exactly the same, right? So it's oscillator B, has all the same parameters, does all the same things. So you can, uh, you have two highly powerful oscillators there. We got sub oscillator. We can control the octave. We can control the pan. We can control the waveform. We can control the level. And then we can also control whether it goes direct out, passing through none of the effects, or whether it goes through the effects. Right? So direct out bypasses the effects so you don't distort your sub. Right? So you can have a clean sub layer coming through whilst you've got a really messy mid-range and top-end bass. Cool. And then we got noise. Again, it's got a direct out. And then we can come in here and we can select different types of noise. Uh, you can get other things like um, different kicks. Starting with kicks, right? Um, you can change the phase. So where it starts, you can change the random of the phase. You can control the pitch, the pan, the level, and then you've also got um, the ability just to trigger it once rather than to constantly play it through. So it's like a one shot, right? 
And then you've got key tracking here. So the pitch will change as you move up the keyboard for that. Um, so that's the noise oscillator. And then what else have we got here? We got the filter. Um, so we can turn that on. And you'll notice that when I turned it on, it didn't um, it didn't become active, like the window didn't come open. It's because we don't have any of the oscillators turned on. So we turn that oscillator on, still doesn't do anything. That's because here we've got the buttons to enable um, what uh, what's going to send into the filter. So in this case, A is sending into the filter, but A is not on. So if we turn A off, we turn B on, boom, all of a sudden the filter is active. Right, so... Here we can select different filter types, band passes, high passes, um, low pass, notch filters. Um, then we've got like creative filters all through here. Um, yeah, lots of options for different filtering. Um, we got cutoff control, resonance control, pan control, drive control. Fat control. And then mix. So how much that's being mixed. So if we only want 70% of the filter. Or we want all the filter. Cool. Um, so oscillator A, oscillator B, noise, sub. Right? So these are if you want the noise or the sub to pass through. Um, and then finally you've got key tracking. So the higher up you play on the keyboard in some cases the more open the filter will be. Right. Um. Cool. So next we have the envelopes. And you can see one, two, three envelopes available here. And we... Um, have the attack, the hold, the decay, the sustain, and the release parameters uh, available to us down the bottom here for each envelope that we've got selected. So what we'll do, we'll turn the filter off. Right, so I've got that saw. Let's go ahead and use the filter. So I want an instant attack. I want the sustain to come all the way down. And then I want to play with my decay. Right, so I like that. I'll bring up the sustain of it. Give it a bit of release. Cool, so that envelope is, um, envelope one by default is the amplitude envelope. Cool. So envelope two, we can turn the filter on and we could pull the filter down all the way. Um, and I can actually um, press this cross button and this allows me to basically take this parameter. So I'm taking the envelope and I can pull it over and I can apply it to the cutoff on the filter. And all of a sudden you see it's gone blue and it's got this little sort of cutoff amount. So now this envelope journey is being mapped to that cutoff. So at the moment, it just opens and closes, right? Because it's just, it's basically like a square wave, right? Just instant open. Holds at that, uh, decays to nothing because the sustain is at 100%. And then when I let it go, it just drops down, right? So if I change this, I can go instant attack again, sustain down to like 50%, and then I can play with the decay. Right? And what's cool about Serum is in multiple places we can actually watch the journey that the sound is making, right? So when I press this, um, you can see that there's a little pulsing, a little pulse that kind of follows us. So at the moment it's on here, right? Because I'm holding the key and it's sustaining. And when I let it go, you're going to see it come down. So we're following visually the journey of the sound. If I come over to the envelope, you can see the same thing. Filter holds there, and then if I put some decay on it, you see it also come down. But you see it in multiple places. First of all, you see this little blue dot, right, moving down, and then when I let it go, boom, comes to close. 
And then we're also seeing the filter reacting here as well. Okay, so the filter, um, the envelope goes from zero to um, maximum open. But how do we control the amount that the filter actually opens, right? Because I don't want the filter going all the way to maximum. I only want it coming sort of like, let's say, about there. What I can do is I can click on the little blue, so sort of over the little blue thing that we can see here, and I can grab that and I can pull that down. So that's actually controlling how much of the envelope is being applied. So if I pull that down further, Cool. So um, that is how the envelope can be applied to um, a particular parameter. And we can do that with multiple different examples. In this case, we used it with a filter, but we can actually also apply that, let's say, to the resonance. And we can pull the amount of resonance down that it's going to control. If we turn it up just to exaggerate it, you can see it starts higher, but then it slowly comes off. Cool, I'm just playing random notes, sorry. Um, but if we crank the reason, sounds a little bit sort of uh, goer-like with the resonance there. So we have the ability to map envelopes to particular things, and we've got a bunch of different envelopes that we can use. So that's it for this video. We have covered the top of the menu section We've covered the sub, noise, oscillator, oscillator A, B, filter, and we've talked about the envelopes. So in the next videos, we're going to continue through the rest of these. So stay tuned for those. You'll see the next Serum video coming out next week after this one. Hope you guys learned heaps. If you like, give it a thumbs up. If you liked even more, subscribe, follow me, get on social media. I'll see you guys again very soon.